You know what form factor gets neglected more than any other? It's MATX. ATX gets all the bells and whistles, the PCI expandability, it's the conventional PC size, right? And ITX gets the portability plus. You can pack it into a suitcase or a backpack or something along those lines, and it's not gonna take up a ton of space during transport. It won't take up a ton of space on your desk. So it makes sense maybe to spend a little bit more for an ITX build if that's what you're after. MATX though is the awkward middle child. It's too large to be considered super portable most of the time, and it's too small to be considered super expandable. This is just, yeah, it's, it's a nice middle ground, and this doesn't get a lot of love, including from me, and I, I am guilty of this, but I want to pay respects to the MATX form factor by building an MATX PC in this video. And with us today are a bunch of goodies. Starting first with the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. This is a 3D vCache Zen 3 CPU, eight cores, 16 threads. It's gonna be a pretty sweet gaming performer. It's not gonna be as good as a 7800X 3D, which is the next generation of uh, vCache eight core chips from AMD. Uh, but this is still a heck of a CPU, especially for the price under 200 US dollars today. It's a buy in my book. We've got 16 gigs of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 in white. Now, if 32 gigs is more your jam, maybe some of the games you play, you expect will utilize more than 16 gigs of system memory. That's a very quick swap, just keep that in mind. And to round out the platform, we have an ASRock B550M Steel Legend. For storage, we're going with the Western Digital Blue SN580 one terabyte NVMe drive. This is not the fastest PCI Gen 4 drive out there, but it is PCI Gen 4 compatible, and it's a pretty affordable drive as well. Cooling our CPU is a Thermaltake Tough Air 110. I haven't used Thermaltake products in a good while. I thought this top flow cooler looked pretty cool. It does include a PWM fan as well. It's not the beefiest, maybe not ideal, for a 5700X 3D, but these chips in general don't run too hot. I think we'll be okay. As for graphics, I've opted for a Radeon RX 7800 XT from Gigabyte. This card is pretty beefy. It's a triple fan card. Uh, it is also pretty thick, but it should fit in our Lee & Lee case. Now our power supply is certainly no miracle worker. This is an EVJ 700 watt GD. The price is the real kicker with this one. Just over 50 USD as of time of filming for a 700 watt 80 plus gold unit. That's impressive. I don't care that it's not modular or anything like that. Uh, and it does come with a decent warranty as well. So this is a value champ in my book. I've used many of these in the past and uh, I don't really have anything else to say about it. I stand by this decision, even in a budget that's gonna tip us just over a thousand USD. Now for the case, this is the Lee & Lee A3 made in partnership with Dan. It has a pretty sleek wood aesthetic up front, airflow basically everywhere. Every panel in existence has perforations in it, which is pretty awesome. So I'm not worried at all about airflow here. We're not using using an AIO or anything either. Again, we're just sticking with a uh, top flow uh, air cooler in our 110 from Thermaltake. Uh, but this will also accommodate very large graphics cards, including our Gigabyte 7800 XT. So just something to note there, if you have a beefier uh, card and you wanna run it in a case that looks more like a traditional, like portable ITX style chassis, uh, then this should support those uh, with very few exceptions. I'm not sure if there's any graphics card in existence that won't fit left to right in this case. I'm sure there are a few, uh, maybe like some some beefy 4090s, but uh, this has enough volume, I think, to accommodate what we have here. It'll also support ATX power supply, so you don't need to go with the SFX standard, which usually costs a bit more money as well. Either way, the important boxes are checked. It looks cool, it's got decent airflow, and it supports all the hardware we need it to. I thought it would also be just a, a breath of fresh air to build in something that looks a bit different. So with all that out of the way, it is time to start building. Right after this, I hope you'll stay with me. Retail Windows keys are expensive. So if you're planning your next PC build, consider checking at our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of the OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks without relying on sketchy third-party software. This month only, you can snag Windows 10 and 11 Home and Pro OEM keys for 30% off using our promo code GSVIP. Simply click the link below corresponding to your version of Windows, click buy now, and pay with a secure payment method like PayPal. At checkout, don't forget our code again, GSVIP, and watch as 30% Cents ripped right off the top, bringing Windows 10 down to 15 bucks and Windows 11 to 21. After your order's been placed, hop on over to the user center and click view key slash codes, and there you go, a genuine OEM Windows key that'll lock to your combination of hardware. Know that you may need to reactivate when swapping things like motherboards by nature of how OEM keys work, but it sure beats the heck out of retail pricing, and most folks aren't swapping motherboards every day. And be sure to stick around till later in the video, where we'll show you how to activate Windows with said key. In the meantime, check out those links below, and don't forget our special offer code GSV VIP to save 30%. We're gonna try assembling this entire platform in one solid take, which uh, every time I say that, it never ends up being one take, but I'm, I'm gonna commit to it this time. Yeah, look at that. Really like the way this looks. Asrock did a great job with their Steel Legend series this time around. 
We've got uh, nice silver accents. No white, I thought there might have been a little bit of white on here, so the, the RAM might stand out a bit more than I was expecting, but uh, overall, this looks pretty cool. Alrighty, now this, uh, this CPU does not come with a cooler. That's something that you'll want to keep in mind. It's one of the reasons why it is a bit cheaper. You can see that's where, that's where the cooler would be. Lift up this lever here, make sure our orientation is correct. We'll drop it into the socket, and then we'll lower that retention arm. I suppose we can go ahead and take care of DDR4 quickly while we're here. Just a personal preference. That was not going in the way I wanted it to. Alrighty. And uh, all we can do, yeah, we'll do the drive next. So it will sit like that there. What do we have next? Uh, we've got the cooler. So this, again, I've never used a thermal take tough air 110 before, so I'm not sure what we're gonna need to do to get this situated. I'm curious how big this is. You know, it's always difficult to tell how big some of these coolers are in their in their product photos on sites like Amazon. But this seems yeah, this this is about what I expected. Okay, it's a, it's maybe a little smaller than I was anticipating, but it it should it should still work. Let's see, will this sit atop our RAM? Yeah, look at that. Plenty of clearance. I think we might even be able to situate it more like this here if we don't want to cover the RAM up. That might be what I do depending on how this mounts. You know, the white doesn't look all that bad. I, I thought it would stand out a bit more than it does. There are accents on this motherboard that seemed white in the product photos, but uh, I'm okay with the way this looks. I'm also okay with the way that the fan blends in with the, uh, the kind of gray aesthetic that the Steel Legend gives us here. So all in all, this is a pretty sweet looking platform. Now let's get it in our case. So here is the A3 fully stripped down. Wanted to give you a quick POV just to show you what to expect with a chassis like this. Four PCI slots at the rear, mounts for a 120 mil that you can slide up or down uh, just above that. And then we have uh, actually the mount here up front for the power supply. So you can see from above, the power supply will actually be facing uh, with the cable connector upright. And then you'll have this power cable that comes included with the chassis uh, running from the rear up to the unit. So this will make connecting pa to power, you know, from the from the back much more doable. You don't have to run your power cable through the chassis. So it's nice that this is already baked in. Uh, you can see the motherboard tray there is gonna be good for up to MATX. And we have plenty of space below the power supply as long as it's not super long for a lengthy graphics card. The design's actually extremely simple. There's no, for example, cable management headroom behind the motherboard tray. Everything's gonna be up front. And uh, yeah, with this one, what you see really is what you get. And speaking of what you get, you also get one of these uh, small little tackle boxes filled with all the screws and zip ties and things you'll need to arrange your PC inside the A3. Our back plate is integrated so we can go ahead and gently drop our platform in. And that is a snug fit if I've ever seen one. Let's go through some of the included screws and I've got to say, I sure do love my spare claps. All tightened down now. We can move on to this uh, front IO wiring. I'm gonna take care of some 120 mils up top for extra airflow. I'm gonna have these set to intake. I think this is gonna benefit the uh, build overall. I'll discuss this a bit later. Gonna have a fourth one at the rear set to exhaust. This will be the only active exhaust fan in the case. And I've got that cable completely tucked behind this rear IO cover, which uh, keeps things nice and clean. We're off to a pretty good start. And I've gotta say, this looks better than I thought it would from a cable management perspective. At least me doing what little I have to kind of keep everything nice and orderly. That's probably gonna change though once we install the power supply. And that's of course our next step. 700 watts is fairly comfortable for this build. We could maybe step it down to 600, but I think this is gonna give us a little more breathing room. And you can see this one is not special by any means. It does have blacked out cables, which is nice from an aesthetic perspective, maybe not for troubleshooting, uh, but there, there are no bells and whistles with this one. It just works and for 60 bucks, I'm not gonna complain. Now it looks like we can remove the power supply bracket in this chassis. I would appreciate that because there's no way to secure it now from the top since we've got the fans in there. It was a bit of a mishap on my part. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna install this fan side out. So effectively pulling fresh air in through the front panel, it's perforated, we might as well use it. And uh, this keeps it more or less a closed system. And check it out, looks pretty cool. I am having a bit of trouble connecting this eight pin EPS to the top left of this motherboard. You can see how far away the power supply is as a result of, well, case layout. And since this uh, power supply is non-modular, I really don't have much of a choice. I could flip the power supply fan side inward. That would help get this a little closer to the, uh, to the motherboard tray, but it's just something to look out for. If you have extensions, that will probably sort you out. You won't have any issues at all, but 
here it's uh, it's a bit of a stretch. So I've got some cables just kind of reaching across where I'd otherwise like to hide them. Just one more piece to go then, the graphics card. To get that installed, we'll remove this door. Actually, just, just slides open. Okay, that's cool. And we'll remove a couple of these PCIe slot covers. For this all AMD PC, I wanted to make sure the graphics card we chose looked the part as well as played it. And this 7800 XT is just beautiful from Gigabyte. You know, these cards, they kind of slept on. I, I know that uh, people are going to be biased one way or the other in a lot of cases, and it's just unfortunately how this industry works. But uh, I really like this card, particularly because it doesn't have a 12 volt high power connector. That's a pet peeve of mine. And you also get a lot of performance for the money spent. AMD's uh, traditionally been the value king in the graphics department. Here's the true test though. Let's see just how much space we have in here. Let's move some cables out of the way. That should be it. I think it is. I didn't hear a click. That's strange. I usually hear a click, but that is fully inserted. Get our dual eight pins connected. Wow, that is such a nice fit. And you can see how much more room we have to spare. We do unfortunately have to shove all of our extra cables just to the front of the case because there's nowhere else to put them. Again, we don't have any space back here. The right side panel literally clamps against the motherboard tray, which I mean, in hindsight, it's not the worst thing. Like we do still have tons of space there, but if you're running a much larger power supply and a much larger graphics card, you're probably gonna have issues. Now we can snap on these panels, almost all of them completely toolless, including this front. Let's see. Yep, just clips in like so. Right and left are a piece of cake too. And lastly, the top again, also perforated and it just slots right in and locked in place with two captive thumb screws. That's it. That's a full build in the Lee and Lee A3. It was, it was pretty straightforward. I'm actually going to quickly remove the left side panel so you can see what's going on inside. I don't believe this case comes with an optional left tempered glass panel. I'm okay with that because the solid panel is at least, well, not fully solid. It is slightly perforated. Uh, they're very small holes, but I think they are going to make a bit of a difference. So we've added four fans to this chassis. Again, it didn't come with any, so keep that in mind when it comes uh, to budgeting uh, in a case like this but we fully deck this thing out. I mean, apart from an AIO, which this case also officially supports, we've populated almost every single space we can in here, and it looks really, really good. Now let's make sure she turns on. It would be a shame if, uh, if not. Okay, right away we get the LEDs on the motherboard. That's a good sign. And then the power button. Where's the, where's the power button? Is it on this side? Is it in the middle? Oh, it's in the middle. There we go. Yeah, fires up right away. That is awesome. You know, the one thing that this motherboard doesn't have that I noticed after purchasing it is Wi-Fi. If you want built-in Wi-Fi, if that's a big deal to you, then uh, make sure that you purchase a version that does include it. Uh, this has an extra like viable PCI slot. So if you wanted to, wanted to run like a PCIe based Wi-Fi card, you could do that. The graphics card is going to be a heck of a performer, especially for 1080p and 1440p gaming. It will be able to handle some 4K, but the, the true sweet spot's going to be quad HD and the 16 gig frame buffer is going to be a huge help as well. I'm gonna quickly grab our portable monitor just to make sure the system, you know, actually posts. I'd be shocked if it didn't, but it's always worth checking. I also didn't mention this earlier, but all of these components with a couple of exceptions were purchased specifically for this build by me. This isn't like uh, I just had parts laying around. I wanted to put my money where my mouth is and show you uh, what about a thousand dollar-ish budget could get you if you decided to go all AMD. Could you make some concessions, make some swaps? Sure, if you really wanna prioritize like a beefier platform, let's say, you could maybe opt for Zen 4, but I, I, I don't know if I would. I think the 5700X3D is a really great price. You can stay with DDR4 instead of paying more for DDR5, which is not an option for the latest AMD platform. Just things like that, they're gonna help keep the cost down. Hey, would you look at that? A post right away, that's an awesome start. So uh, no issues. With the rig itself, inherently, we could go into the BIOS and tweak some things. We'll enable uh, DOCP, make sure that our RAM is running at optimal speeds, and of course, install things like drivers uh, for in particular the graphics card, maybe the chipset, etc. But before I get ahead of myself, we need to install an operating system, Windows. That's pretty important, right? Installing Windows is very straightforward. We have a video detailing exactly how to do this step-by-step step, linked in the description for you to follow. But let's say you've gotten that far. Let's say you've installed Windows and you're wondering what comes next. Well, before long, you'll notice a pesky activation watermark pop-up. So you can use this operating system for free with limitations. And if you'd like those removed, you can snag a key from our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Once obtained, navigate to the activation tab within Windows settings. You can get there quickly by typing activate in your search tab and clicking enter. 
enter. From here, click change or add product key, paste your code, allow Windows to run its checks, and then click activate. Give it a minute, you should notice that watermark disappear, along with a message that Windows has been successfully activated if everything goes as planned. The IP SDD key special sale is happening now and for a limited time, so be sure to snag a key or two before it's too late. And be sure to use my special offer code again, GSVIP, for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10, Windows 11, and more. If you are curious how this system performs, it's obviously no slouch. The graphics card is going to cost you somewhere around four to 500 USD. Closer to four would be optimal. Of course, you want to save as much money as you can when you purchase a graphics card like this. But uh, for the price spent, it's going to give you roughly 4070 Ti performance if I had to ballpark it. Uh, in TimeSpy, the graphics score is somewhere around 20,000. So that gives you an idea of kind of where this stacks up against comparable NVIDIA cards. The the CPU score of 11,359. I don't think it's a true reflection of the gaming capabilities of the CPU. This only being a DX12 synthetic, it's not going to give you a proper real world example of how well the CPU will perform, but it's been proven time and time again that 3D vCache technology baked into chips like these from AMD excel in gaming. This combination frequently averages a score better than 87% of all submitted times by results, which again is pretty incredible for a system that only costs us around 1000 in the USD. You could argue that we made a few compromises. The power supply obviously allowed us to opt for a slightly beefier graphics card than we otherwise might. The case was also surprisingly affordable. You know, you look at something like this from a company like Lee & Lee, known to make a fairly premium chassis, you might think, okay, Greg, that's gotta cost 100 plus, a minimum 100 USD. It only costs 70 bucks, 69.99 as of time of filming. Now you don't get fans. That's the, the, the one knock maybe on the price that I could see some arguing in the comment section. Well, Greg, of course it's cheaper. You don't get any fans. I mean, add at least 30 bucks to that. That brings us close to 100 USD if not more. So I do like that we have some choice there. Lee and Lee's baked that into the price and they're not being too greedy up front considering what we're not getting. Cable management is tough. That's really my only other gripe with this. I mean, I don't want this to turn into a full-fledged like, case review, but I mean, you guys saw us building it, right? It, it's, it's not, um, it's not full of compromises and it does support a wide variety of hardware. I'd say we did a pretty good job with this one. This is probably one of my better builds of 2024. It's, it's very nicely balanced. I know that 3D Mark Times by doesn't necessarily suggest that just based on the disparity between graphics and CPU scores. Again, you have to remember that we have 3D vCache uh, and that will definitely benefit you in many titles. You will see noticeable frame rate bumps, sometimes equivalent to even graphics card jumps. Like uh, if you jump from like a 60 series to a 70 series, if you're on NVIDIA, um, that can sometimes times uh, be reflected in just simply jumping from a non 3D vCache chip to a 3D vCache chip. That technology is pretty awesome. And I know folks are hotly anticipating the latest generation uh, Ryzen processors packing 3D vCache, but uh, the 5700X 3D is a heck of a bargain for well under 200 bucks. I'm gonna have the entire rig linked below if you wanna build something just like this, uh, but pay special attention to the CPU, the motherboard, of course, and the graphics card. If you want an all AMD build that costs around a thousand bucks today, this will definitely get the job done and you've got some room for expandability left. That is a wrap for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you would change about this build. Do you think it's a, a decently balanced system for a thousand bucks or am I missing something? Is there some glaring omission that I'm just not seeing here? Uh, what would you change to make it fit your needs. And that's that's the point. When it comes to custom PCs, you can spec them how you want, how you need. If you need more storage, piece of cake. Do you need to cut into other areas of the budget to make that work? Sure. Is it worth that? You have to figure that out for yourself. There's so many choices, so many options, and the customizability is virtually endless. That's why I love building PCs, and I imagine why a lot of you do as well. So be sure to leave those comments down below. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you doing? Click that red subscribe button and consider sticking around for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for building with me.